Welcome back to the unofficial guide to NDI. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the basics of networking and answer the question, what is a local area network and how can you set one up? So what is a local area network? Well, NDI, as we've been talking about it, is a simple way to send video and audio streams over a network from computer to computer or computer to device or device to device using networking equipment. And so at a high level, a network is a group of computers inside of a building. It doesn't have to be inside a building. There's lots of different ways to deploy local area networks. But it starts with some networking equipment that we're going to go over today to really kind of, I'm going to show you in our studio how we set it up and different ways to do IP networking. So in the grand scheme of things, we've talked about what is NDI, a brief history of NDI, popular NDI software, how we use NDI at Stream Geeks. And now it's time to really dig into the networking part of this, which is going to really uncover what type of networking gear you need. And then in the next video, the bandwidth considerations and the types of kind of more detailed information about networking that you need to know. So at the heart of all NDI connectivity is a local area network which essentially is a group of computers that can communicate together over IP, this internet protocol that has revolutionized modern communication. It could be an ethernet cable connecting each of these devices, or it could be Wi-Fi. Uh, wireless connectivity does exist, and it does provide the type of networking that NDI can use, and we'll actually demonstrate that in a moment. Three critical pieces of networking gear that you should know about one is a router, and the router in most local area networks really is the brain, and it's how it actually addresses all of the devices and gives each device an IP address so that we kind of have like a mailbox address. It's like literally how we know where to deliver what information, and the router manages that. It's a critical piece of networking infrastructure. Can, you, can computers communicate without a router? Yes, you can actually set up a couple cameras, a couple devices, even a computer on a network switch and use NDI. But most networking systems, most local area networks do include a router because it includes a lot of different tools that allow you to manage your network and how the devices can communicate. It also allows you to interface with the internet, with a connectivity to give all of the devices on your network internet access. So routers are very important. A lot of times you get a router from your internet service provider. So a lot of times, whether it's Comcast or AT&T or Verizon, there's so many internet service providers, you buy or rent a router from them, which gives you internet access. From there, you can connect that router to a network switch, which then allows you to connect multiple different devices. This route, this network switch right here looks like it has 8, 16, 24 ports on it. Some network switches can power devices. Those are power over Ethernet enabled network switches. Some network switches are managed and some network switches are unmanaged. Managed network switches offer some management features that allow you to do some things that a router can do and actually allow you to kind of have quality of service throughout the different devices that are requesting information on your local area network. But in general, network switches allow you to kind of grow your network and connect more devices. The router isn't designed to have hundreds of ports. Uh, that's where it leverages these network switches. And then connected to many, many network switches are wireless access points, which I will show you in our office. Today, we're going to get a good look at some of these in our studio, but a wireless access point connects via Ethernet to a network switch and then provides wireless access throughout to your network. Now, as we are building out a network, thinking of our network, every device will have an IP address. And the very first address will be given to the router. It identifies, or sorry, the very first address is identifies the network as a whole. The very first IP address, meaning one, number one, 
is assigned to the router in most cases. And this IP address could be different. 192.168.1.0 is a very popular standard network um, type, but it could be 10.10.5.6. It doesn't matter. There's different numbers, but essentially this is how an example um, network might be set up, where's dot, where it would be these three first uh, types there, the numbers with the periods there, uh, would be the range. And then the last IP address number would be the like exact device uh, or address on the network. So with 192.168.1.1, if you type that into a web browser, and I'm just going to do that, honestly, just to show you what will happen here. It will literally, now this is, this is actually good. This is what you would want. This actually will take me to the router. And I don't have access to that router. I'm not going to type in the username and password right now. But literally, the very first address on the network is the router. It's a secure gateway. We have a ubiquity network, and you'll see a little bit of that today. Um, but essentially, your home network probably has an IP address. It's probably the very first IP address. and when you get that IP address, that is how you can actually, just like a web browser, type it in and get to your router. Now, all the rest of the, uh, the um, addresses on your network are given to devices. And so, for example, if I go to dot .60, which I know for a fact, you know what, I'm going to make it 60, 61. Um, 192.168.61, that brings up a PTZ optics camera. Um, and, and so this is actually gives me like PTZ control of this camera specifically. Um, and so that's a device on the network that has that specific IP address. So you usually have about 254 devices, addresses that are unique, and then you have to have a whole nother range. And then 255 is usually the broadcast address, which can automatically broadcast to all IP addresses, 1 through 254. So here's an example home network. And we're going to show you this in our studio because I think that'll really help. But essentially, you've got a wireless router from your internet service provider. Maybe it's plugged into your smart TV. And in that way, it can give internet access to your smart TV to browse Netflix and HBO and all these different things. A lot of routers have Wi-Fi built in, and so that's great. It can power a MacBook Pro. It can, it can connect to your smartphone. And Brian, one thing I want to do, if you can show my phone here, um, is I would like, you know what actually would be really cool? Yeah, if you can show my phone. So here's my phone here, and I'm going to do two things here that's going to be kind of cool. One is I actually have, an NDI capture app. Now, when I turn this on to click, click to start broadcasting, uh, my phone over Wi-Fi will actually be available as an NDI source. So I just thought that would be kind of cool for Brian to pull in to this production. Um, and so now when I go to, um, is it still working? NDI capture, begin to start broadcasting. Okay, yeah, so I'm broadcast. There should be an, an output from this camera or from this phone. Is it working or no? Okay. So, what I'd like to do, oh, screen broadcast, um, is I'd like to show you guys how even a smartphone, if I go into settings and I go to Wi Fi and I check in here, you can see even my phone has an IP address. That's the IP address of my phone. And it actually received that IP address from the router. And I just wanted to show that as an example there, um, just so you could see. Okay. So let's go back to the presentation here, just to show you that every device, even a smartphone, will have access to NDI. And, um, or will have, will have an IP address. So that, that's this example here. Now, we actually went out and made an awesome video about how to truly configure a router and a network switch all to work for NDI specifically. 
and it's in this video here. So you can scan that QR code, take a look at that video. It's going to give you some really great information about how to set up an affordable TP-Link router and network switch with PoE, really good for live streaming and video production. At a high level, your router connected to the switch, connected to a Wi-Fi access point. Now, before we take a look at a more advanced scenario, I want to go to my live camera really quickly and just show you guys how everything's connected to the network, right? So the computer Brian's on is connected to the network. Above me, we have a wireless router. That is what's actually connecting directly to my phone here. And then down here, and this is just a really modern approach to video production, we have a network switch. So how are there so many cables here? Well, We've got a lot of different things connected. The computer's obviously connected to the ethernet, but then we've got like network connected cameras. This is an auto tracking camera. This is the simple track too. That's connected to the network. We've got a PTZ optics NDI camera. And of course that is connected to ethernet. It's also connected via SDI. Um, but each of the cameras and devices on our studio are all connected to the network. So we actually put in a networking switch. So this example, I think, is going to uh, be a lot better now. If we cut to the PowerPoint here, I think it's going to make a lot of sense where we're seeing now that this router and this network switch are becoming the hub of the video production system. We have four cameras, three computers, and an IP joystick. So let's go through this table really quickly. I'm going to take it full screen. And I just want, this is the way that we just simply kind of organize devices. So starting with the IP address, we are going down in a sequential form. And we're also uh, talking about the device. What is the device? Where is it? What is it used for? And this is just basics right now. So we've got our network address. We have the router. We have a whole chunk. A lot of times they call this a block of IP addresses from 2 to 59 that are literally just used for computers and printers and other things like that. But then we've got another block starting at 60 where we're putting cameras. So we've got one, two, three, four, five cameras and a joystick, and we've kind of sequentially just organized them just, to, just from an organizational perspective. The main live streaming computer is at IP address 70, and then the next IP address is 70, colon 8089 and that's actually for vmix social so a lot of times software running on a computer can actually have a web server connected to your network that comes in through a port as opposed to a uh, dedicated ip address we've also got a, these three computers here that we talked about 71 72 and 73 the first one is running a screen capture for a laptop to get the PowerPoint presentation. The second and third are powering displays in a lobby and a nursery with NDI Studio Monitor. And you can see here, there's also an iPad using the NDI camera app that's wireless. And another smartphone using an iOS control app for the PTZ cameras. Those two wireless devices have an asterisk, meaning it says a, the IP address has been assigned with DHCP. So when a smartphone receives an IP address, it receives it automatically. It's not done uh, manually. It's highly recommended that your computer and the devices on your network receive a static IP address manually so that they can be organized in this way. But DHCP is actually allows your router to automatically assign an IP address to a device, and that's very common with wireless devices because they can come and go. Someone brings a smartphone, then they leave, they get an IP address, and then it's gone. Now, when you are choosing a network switch, um, there's some considerations, and we're going to dig into this in more detail in the next video where we talk about um, you know, bandwidth considerations. But when you purchase a network switch, you can't just choose any network switch for NDI. At this point, pretty much the standard is gigabit networking infrastructure, but you may find older networking infrastructure that is 10100, which doesn't really work for NDI. So make sure that you have at least a gigabit of Ethernet. 
Now it says here, but no more than a gigabit. I don't know why that says that. I need to get rid of that. I have to check that. I don't know where that came from. Um, I think that was from something else. Let's get rid of that. Um, full throughput backplane is important. Um, it's not. It says required here. This is for like for best quality. Um, essentially, that means that the full gigabit is available through the switch. Um, DHCP is recommended and it's required in some cases um, to work with control panels from NewTek, to work with smartphones uh, in general. And then uh, for devices that optionally support PoE, you want to power devices over Ethernet, you do need to look into the power rating for each port and make sure it supports the devices that are, you know, require a certain amount of wattage. Now, Matt Davis, our lead engineer, who really is the brains behind our recommendations and more technical networking devices that we recommend, is there's two big points for consideration, consideration when you purchase networking gear for NDI. One is that the switches must accommodate MDNS. And ideally, the switches also accommodate multicast with IGMP version 3 or later. Now, Throughout the book, and this is going to get a little bit more detailed than we'll talk about in this video, uh, we're going to give you additional uh, you know, recommendations for optimizing your networking switch to work perfectly for NDI. So you'll find those in the books, along with a few jokes about firewalls. And then, of course, it's not just your Ethernet networking equipment, but also the cabling that you use. So essentially, you can have really old Ethernet cabling, Cat5 and older, that doesn't support the gigabit connectivity that's required for both NVI projects. So um, you know, consider the cabling that you're using. There are network adapters that can increase the amount of bandwidth you can use with a single computer. Um, so take a look at some of the network adapters that are available, and then. If possible, choose networking hardware with low latency, full circle latency, less than 14 milliseconds. That's basically a, a, a given, kind of like a standard there. Um, and then for the bandwidth requirements that we'll talk about in uh, the future, the next video, but essentially uh, depending on the resolution and frame rate of your cameras um, or project in general, uh, NDI HX, the high efficiency version of NDI, and full NDI do vary in their bandwidth requirements. And we will be doing some calculations to talk about that um, in the next video. Um, but a tip from NewTek, and this is a tip from a lot of video production professionals, it may be of value to you to run a dedicated network so that you don't have congestion and you're not you trying to use your IP video network for something else. So key takeaway, a local area network is a network of interconnected computers. The common networking equipment, it's available off the shelf, just simple, affordable, easy to use connectivity devices can be used to create a local area network, not just for computers to communicate, but to send and receive video from one another. And that's kind of the core of NDI and the value that it brings. And each device on your network will have an IP address. So I'm highly recommending that you create an IP address table to manage those IP addresses. So really wrap your heads around your, uh, how it's going to work because you're going to reference those IP addresses for a lot of different reasons. You may not need to. NDI is meant to be super simple. But uh, at least you're learning how it works. And I'd recommend making that device table as your video production grows. All right, that's all for this video. On their next video, we're really going to go over bandwidth considerations and get more technical and make sure that you can avoid any possible issues on to leverage your local area network for NDI video. So don't forget to download the book and read these chapters to kind of reinforce what we're learning. I'll see you in the next video.